All right, y'all. Welcome to another episode of Sunnis Vision Art and Life. My name is Adewale Agboke Jr. Please review us, rate us, give us a five star. Don't be a hater. Today we continue with the Clash of the Titan Saga Part Two: Assassins versus Infinity Villains. But before we get going with this podcast, we want to pay some of these bills, y'all. This Sunnis Vision Podcast is brought to you by A4 Capital Consulting. Growing good business anywhere and everywhere. Let A4 Capital Consulting take your business to the next level. That's A4. CapitalConsulting.com for details, y'all. That's A4 CapitalConsulting.com for details, y'all. Like I told y'all before, A4 Capital Consulting is coming out with their podcast soon. They're working on it right now. Once they get it going, I'm going to let y'all know about it. But if you want your business to go to the next level, you want to listen to the A4 Capital Consulting podcast. So check it out, y'all. Whether that's Apple, Desert, Spotify, Amazon Music, you're going to be able to get it anywhere you listen to podcasts, y'all. And this podcast is also brought to you by Anadale for the Ankle. Don't live with foot pain, let Anadale for the Ankle. Make your feet happy again. That's AnnaDaleCenter.com for details, y'all. That's AnnaDaleCenter.com for details, y'all. As I stated before, I got my custom orthotics from Anadale Center over there with Dr. Nero and Nusode. You know, they're doing what they do over there, specializing. This is not just a regular orthotics, y'all. This is custom, made for my feet specifically. So every pair of batas that I wear, these jokers go up in there, man, and they make my feet feel great. Let me tell y'all, no more pain, no surgeries was needed. Dr. Nusode saw the situation, diagnosed me, checked it out, fixed the situation. I got my custom orthotics, man. So it's made from the best stuff, makes your feet feel great. You know, that's the outside right there under the feet, and that's the inside where my socks go on. You know what I'm saying? So, AnnaDaleCenter.com for details, y'all. AnnaDaleCenter.com for details, y'all. Now, let's get to this podcast, y'all. As I stated before, Clash of the Titans, part two. So- Clash of the Titans saga, excuse me. Part 2, Assassins vs. Infinity Villains. As I stated before, I'm not going to decide to fight. I'm going to let y'all do that. But what I am going to do is break down each character, even show you a poster, art if I've got it available, so you can see who we're talking about. Today's characters, we got these awesome matchups, of course. The Assassins, the villains from the Kajaf Assassin universe, you know, they're about to no good always, you know what I'm saying? Figuring how they're going to take over the world versus different villains from, from the Infinity universe that I... Some of my favorite villains. Let's just put it that way, y'all. Let's just put it that way. My favorite villains. I'm just going to be honest about that. So, here we go, y'all. First matchup, we got Yukon versus Doomsday. Doomsday, excuse me. Everybody knows who Doomsday is. But before we get going, let's show y'all who Yukon is. Right? Yukon from the Karja Assassin Universe. He's a villain. You know what I'm saying? So, let's check him out. Let's check Yukon out real fast. You know, I'm going to show y'all posters if I got posters of the characters. But this is Yukon right here. You know what I'm saying? Strong guy of the Assassin's team. You know what I mean? Let's break Yukon down. Uh, let's go into the bio book, which is available on Carjack for Assassins. You know what I'm saying? Get your copy today because the first official Carjack for Assassins comic book is coming out, y'all. And it's going to be fire. You know what I mean? So, look. Let's check out Yukon. Let's give y'all some breakdown of what he is. You know, okay. Um, real name, Titus Manoluga, alias, of course, Yukon. 67288. He's a big dude. Um... Occupation, security enforcer, Argon Tech. Really? Security enforcer? You know what I'm saying? And then, of course, fighting skills. Primarily wrestling. He's a wrestler. And, of course, he's former um, world's strongest man champion. You know what I mean? And, of course, his weapons are shock cables and his bio suit, which basically offers him invulnerability and literally unlimited strength. Um, the only guy that can rival his strength is probably Diesel from the Carjacks team. You know what I mean? But Yukon is a man not to be reckoned with. He's strong. He's cunning. Um... He's going to do whatever it takes to win the fight. He does not play fair. So if you're looking for a fair fight from UConn, that ain't going to happen. That's not how he rolls. It's dirty. It ain't clean. It ain't. It's just, I'm going to lay you out and put you down, period. And it's going to go down. Anyway, I say it's going to go down by any means necessary. You know what I'm saying? And then they're going against Doomsday, right? Who's really an arch nemesis of Superman. Um, He's an alien. Comes from Earth. He decides, you know what? My only goal is to just annihilate Superman. He's got super strength speed, agility, he's actually technically kind of in- intelligent, a little bit of military tactician, um, because he was created by Cadmus, um, um, and he's basically equal to Superman in every way, even without Superman, even without the freeze breath, the heat vision, he's more than a matchup for Superman, and he's going against Yukon, these two titans, I mean, can you imagine them throwing punches at each other, it'd literally be causing earthquakes, man, if these guys were hitting each other, that's the kind of characters we're looking at here, these two incredible individuals, these in- two incredible villains, um, they up to no good, it's self-destruction, um, it's just straight mayhem if these two go and get each other. Yukon versus Doomsday, like I told y'all, I'm not gonna decide who wins this fight, but I'm gonna let y'all decide who's gonna win this fight. So, on this first matchup, we got Yukon from the Assassins, and then we've got Doomsday from, from the Infinity Villains. Matchup number one. Matchup number two, we got Snipes, uh, the, the gorgeous beauty herself 
versus Lady Deathstrike. Yeah, Lady Deathstrike. I'm gonna break that down. For let's start off with Snipes, of course, my from the Kaja for Assassins universe, from the Assassins um um vi villains from the Assassins. Um, I'm gonna show y'all break it down. Real name Nicole Fam. Of course, the alias is Snipes. Five ten, one forty seven. Um, occupation supermodel. Really supermodel. I mean, she really is a supermodel, but you know that's just a day job. And of course, fighting skills. Master and karate, Brazilian jiu jitsu. Not to mention the shadow arts, which is part of the training all the assassins all have in the assassin universe. And of course, the trusted weapons are energy crossbows, spider darts, acid caps. She's a not a fair fighter, and she uses acid caps to literally blind her enemies, which would be probably usually mostly heroes and anybody else that gets in her way. She's she's conniving. She's a cunning. She's intelligent. She's beautiful. She can distract you. Her beauty alone distracts you. And like I said before, to to look upon her beauty is to look upon death. She's just literally a walking Medusa without the tentacles growing on her head. You know what I'm saying? She's not a good person. She's up to no good. And she's going against Lady Deathstrike. Before I go to showing you all Lady Deathstrike, right? Let's show y'all Snipes. You know what I'm saying? Because most of y'all know what Lady Deathstrike looks like. This is Snipes from the Assassin's Universe. Yeah, she's a gorgeous beauty, as you can see. You know what I'm saying? Looking at her, you're getting distracted, but at the same time, you don't know she's got something coming for you. And then, of course, Lady Deathstrike from the uh, from the Marvel Universe. Um, this lady is incredible. You know what, y'all? Y'all hold on a second. I think I might have a picture of her. That's right, y'all. I decided to go get my X-Men guide. You know what I mean? Who's got one of these? This is a classic right here, man. You don't know what's up if you ain't got one of those. Let's see if we can't find Lady Deathstrike. Let's go through the, uh, the, uh, let's see if we can't find Lady Deathstrike. Come on. Lady Deathstrike. Lady Deathstrike. I know I could find that. There we go. Page 158, 159. I knew it if I looked. I love this book, y'all. I love this book. Whenever I got to look for X-Men stuff, this is where I go to, man. This is this is my go-to. Lady Deathstrike. Yes, sir. There she goes. Woo, she's nasty. That's Lady Deathstrike right there, y'all. She is sick with it. That's going against Snipes right there. Let's break down Lady Deathstrike. Real name, Yuriko Aramato. Um, she's the arch nemesis of Wolverine. Um, dude... She, her main objective is to just annihilate Wolverine. But also, too, she was part of the Weapon X program, right? Created by her father. You know, it was Sabretooth, Deadpool, Wolverine, and her. And if you've ever watched uh, X, uh, this cartoon called Hulk vs. Wolverine, Hulk vs. Thor, you see the storyline there. But Yuriko is an amazing character. She was in Season 3 of X-Men out of the past, uh, Episode 1 and 2 of Season 3. She was hell-bent on getting revenge against uh, Wolverine, but then she got... Stuck up by the Soul Seeker in, in that episode, which really led to the beginning of the Phoenix Saga. You know what I mean? But yo, Yuriko, she is not to be trifled with. She got fighting skills. She got man. She got karate skills. Not to mention she's got those cybernetic tentacles, man. As I showed, I'm gonna show y'all again, man. She is not to be played with. Check that out, y'all. You know what I mean? That's her right there. She's over here like just straight giving cats the business, and it's her against Snipes. Yo, this would be an incredible match. Two of incredible women. Who have incredible skills going against each other. Who don't like anybody. You know what I mean? And this is one person that Snipes cannot distract. You know what I mean? Yuriko is just... Man, she's all about business and getting it done. You mean she's a very focused individual versus Snipes. Who is focused but also intent on distracting you. So, I don't know who's going to win. But I'm going to let y'all decide. But Snipes versus Yukon. I mean, excuse me. Snipes versus Lady Deathstrike. That would be an incredible character. Because it was hard choosing who I wanted to fight Snipes. But I've always been a big fan of Lady Deathstrike. I feel like... Marvel does not do enough to promote her. Of course, she was in that uh, second X-Men movie, um, but it, it just wasn't what I wanted. You know what I mean? Of course, X-Men movies are about to get remade, but yo, Lady Deathstrike, sick with it. Snipes, of course, from the Assassin Universe, you know she's sick with it. You know what I mean? So Snipes versus Lady Deathstrike, I'm going to let y'all decide. Next up, next matchup, we've got Revo. Excuse me. We Yes, we've got Revo from the Assassin Universe versus... Revo versus Saber from Techno Man. Now, Saber, if y'all are wondering, is Techno Man's twin brother. Slade from Techno Man cartoon from the 1990s, 1994, 1995. Before I go into Saber, let me break down Revo, right? Let me show y'all a post of Revo. Just in case y'all want a copy, you know, you got to go get it 
on sunnysvision.com. That's where all our posts are available. You know what I mean? Check that out, y'all. That's Revo. That's the, the, the silent assassin himself. You know what I mean? Revo is not to be messed with. You know what I'm saying? Revo. Um, real name. Let's break down Revo's. Let's give y'all Revo, some Revo info, man. This dude. Oh, my God. Revo is the coolest looking villain you've ever seen. All right? So, Revo, right? Real name, Tuan Lee. Of course, alias is Revo. 6'2", 190. You know what I'm saying? He's a student, major physics, so he likes to mess with the sciences. And his fighting skills include martial arts of every type, of every discipline, and not to mention the shadow arts that the assassins practice themselves. So they've got their own discipline of martial arts. Like, they created for strictly for themselves to use against the universe. You know what I mean? And, of course, let's talk about his weapons. Pincers, these two swords he's got. Y'all can see those two swords he had in his hand. And, of course, shadow disc, his shadow suit, which is sick, blends into light and dark. And, of course, his nunchucks. Energy nunchucks. Now, let's show y'all Revo's pincers again, the swords, so y'all know what's up. This dude, man, oh, my God. Much props to Revo. You know what I'm saying? Check that out. That's Revo right there. You know what I mean? With the pincers. You can see him with the swords. Those are the pincers right there. Going against, you know what I mean? He's, he's, a, he's the best fighter, without question. He might be tied for best fighter in the whole Karjax Assassin universe. Him and Raspion of the Karjax. Revo is combative skills are second to none. And, yes, he's a cocky, confident individual who believes in himself without question he's he has so much belief in himself that he can go against anybody and i decided he needs to go against saber from the techno man universe right Te as a, now let's talk about saber right saber for all of those of you know techno man is uh if you don't know techno man if you haven't watched techno man the cartoon series available you can find it on youtube his twin brother kane plays saber who after darkon who's the leader of venomoids sends gunner who does a terrible job techno man whoops his butt Dark on decide, you know what? Let me send my biggest weapon. Let me send Kane. Excuse me, let me send Kane, aka Saber, who's just like his brother, except he's evil. I mean, he's he's as evil as Techno Man is good. As Techno Man Slade is good. Saber got every type of weapon. Beams, um, a lance, um, that suit, you know what I mean? Um, and he's got he, he doesn't have the combative fighting skills that River has, but his weaponry is so it's with it's he has so much weaponry that it would make a hard fight. Man, and, and let me see if I can find Techno Man for y'all. Because Techno Man, so y'all can get a glimpse of what Saber would look like. Let me see if I can find Techno Man, y'all. Hold on. Y'all, y'all, y'all give me a second. Um I love going through my book. Got a, oh, there we go. So for those wondering what the Techno Man saga looks like, that's Techno Man right there. Now that's imagine that costume, but all Saber in black. That's what Saber looks like. All black. That dude is sick with it. Saber is by far one of the sickest characters I've ever seen. I hope one day there's a Techno Man movie because you know how sick it would be to have Techno Man Slade and Techno Man Saber on the same show? Then, of course, you got Gunner, Darkon, and their sister Shara. But Saber is not to be messed with. And him going against Revo, two individuals that are uh, just at their best at their craft and just straight evil. Ain't got nothing but animosity and they just want to put you down man that's what you get when you get revo versus saber what an incredible matchup i don't know who's gonna win but i'm gonna let y'all decide next up we got kanji revo's twin sister versus uh killer frost from the dc universe man let's first break down kanji for y'all we got kanji right aka uh kanji lee you know what i'm saying who's the twin sister let me find a poster for y'all she's just as skilled as her brother man you know what I'm saying? That's Kanji right there. Kanji Lee. You know what I mean? She's the gorgeous beauty. She's not to be messed with. She's all about business. She don't play. She ain't got time for BS, man. Now, let, let's break her profile down, y'all, because this lady's incredible. Real name, Kanji Lee. Um, 5'10", 158 pounds. She's a student, major is graphic design, which is art. She's an artist, which is weird. So she has an imagination when she's kicking your you-know-what. And, of course, her skills include, just like her brother, master of karate and the shot of arts. And just like her brother, she's trained... In all the arts, not to mention in, in all the disciplines of martial arts, not to mention the shadow arts, as I said before, specifically designed for the assassins. And dude, she can kick your butt. She's a she's a master swordswoman. I, I, her, her, her her skills with the sword are second to none. I can't really not sincere from the carjacks, not Revo from the assassins. Not even her father, Sun Tzu, has better sword skills than she does. And she's so agile. And let's go up with the rest of her. Uh, choice of weapons are katanas and a shark and a shark rings, of course. And she has this bike called Raven, right? So these katanas that she had, these energy katanas cut through anything, just like her brother. And just like her brother, her suit offers light and dark shadow adaptations. 
she can blend into any environment and you wouldn't even know she was there. You know what I mean? And not to mention, she's just a no-nonsense, ain't taking any BS. And as I said before, just like the carjacks, the assassin's costumes offer advancements. Where there's superhuman strength, superhuman speed, agility, um, intelligence, deflect defensive technology fields, offensive technology fields. The assassins, everybody's costume enhances them to become superhuman inhuman in one way or another. And Kanji is just an example of the assassins who are fully loaded with every type of weaponry you can think of. And Kanji, she's daddy's little girl, so you know her father Sun Tzu got make sure she got everything she needs to mop the floor with anybody gets in her path. And who's gonna get in her path? Killer Frost from the DC Universe. You know what I'm saying? She's a villain from the DC Universe in Justice League uh, uh, Unlimited, and she was in Justice League. Um, her, her powers include um, Frost, of course, ice. Manipulation of ice of every type of way she can manipulate. She can even manip manipulate it so much that she can glide on it like she was skating or like she was riding a ride. You know what I'm saying? Just like Iceman from the X-Men. You know what I mean? Killer Frost is evil. She's... And I'm not talking about the one from the Flash TV show because they've kind of made her into a hero. I'm talking about the ones that I saw in like the Batman animated movie Arkham Asylum. You know, she's straight evil, man. She's all about herself. She doesn't care about nobody else but herself. It's her getting on top and everybody else at the bottom. That's how Killer Frost rolls. You know what I'm saying? She ain't playing no games. You know what I'm saying? She's got these freezing powers and she uses them for any way she... And also, too, her powers allow regener regenerative properties. So she, even if we hurt her, she kind of regenerates. Maybe not like instantaneously like Wolverine, but she does eventually heal. Of course, she doesn't have the combative skills as Kanji. So that's the thing things match up. And of course, if Kanji's going against Killer Frost, you know her father... As get her up ready for anything that Killer Frost might throw away. Trying to freeze her to death. All that kind of crap. That ain't going to work. You know what I mean? So I'm going to let y'all decide who would win this matchup. With all everything I've told you about Kanji. And everything I've told you about Killer Frost. Two incredible powerful women that are going against each other. Because without having these amazing incredible women in this um, Clash of the Titans. It ain't no Clash of the Titans. You know what I'm saying? We got ladies out here moving the needle. So that's what we got to do, right? Kanji versus Killer Frost. I'm going to let y'all decide, but that's one hell of a match. I mean, this just makes me dream about an animated movie. You know how sick would this be? Or a movie. I, as Sunday's Vision grows, all these things get manifest into reality, man. So, you know, one day maybe me, DC Comics, Marvel, we're all getting together and say, you know what? Let's bring this Clash of Titans together, man. You know what I'm saying? Clash of Assassin's Universe with the Marvel Universe, with the DC Universe. Let's do this doggone thing. So, Kanji versus Killer Frost, I'm going to let y'all decide. Next up, we got Excursion. The side, the Af cyborg himself versus Killmonger from the from the uh, from the uh, uh, Marvel universe. You know what I'm saying? AKA the arch nemesis of Black Panther. Let's start off with uh, Excursion, AKA Ruben Drones. You know what I mean? God, Excursion is so sick. Oh, I gotta show him to y'all. And he don't look like this no more now. Now in version six, man. You know what I'm saying? If you see him in the new comic book, you wouldn't even know it was him. Excursion. Let's let's break him down. Let's give you a profile. You know what I'm saying? This. Episodes like this give me a chance to break down my characters, man. Let's talk about Ruben Drones, aka Excursion. Real name Ruben Drones, alias of course Excursion. Six four two fifty. Um, his eyes are actually implants. Those aren't his eyes no more. Those are red implants. They're cybernetic. I mean, that guy can see targeting. He allows him to do targeting. Shoot lasers out of it, man. That Excursion is not. He's human, but he's not human. You know what I mean? Of course, he's the head of security at Argon Tech. Really, head of security. Really. You know what I'm saying? And of course, fighting skills include boxer, military training. He was a former Marine slash uh, Naval SEAL. You know what I'm saying? Of course, choice of weapons, 745, which is this big old cannon he has. Small bombs and Zoid cuffs. Now, I'm not going to break down each one of these weapons, but trust me. Excursion go to work on you. His main duty, what he loves to do is put you down and end you, period. Take you out of existence, period, is what Excursion does best. And he's going against another guy who's just like him. Killmonger. From the Black Panther universe, of course, he's played by, uh, um, uh, excuse me, Michael B. Jordan, who was extraordinary as Killmonger in the Black first Black Panther movie. And yes, if you haven't seen the Black Panther 2 movie, what kind of forever, you are missing out. That movie was off the chain. Ten thumbs up, that's what I'm giving it. That's how sick it was. You know what I mean? But Killmonger, man, I was blown away by his, his ruthlessness. Let me see if I can find his poster. You know what I'm saying? Let's see if I can find Killmonger for y'all. I got to look for Killmonger for y'all because Killmonger is sick with it. Let's see if we can find Killmonger. I'm looking for Killmonger for y'all, man. Killmonger is one hell of a villain. Let's see. If we, oh, here we go. I got him. You know I had to draw him. Look at that. Killmonger. Man. 
He's the total antithesis of evil, man. And in his own way, he's kind of advanced. Because he's using the military training, plus a little bit of the Wakanda stuff. And of course, you all see in the movie, he becomes the Black Panther, but the golden one. I mean, yo, this matchup is sick. Real name, uh, Eric Killmonger. Um, it's really African, though. You're from Wakanda, you know what I'm saying? Um, military training, tactical strategist, um, combative skills up the yin-yang. Just like Excursion, um, he's ruthless. He's all about, you get in my way, I'm going to put you down. You know what I'm saying? Killmonger is just one hell of a character. And I really honestly can't wait to see what Marvel does with him on his own. You know how sick that would be to have a Killmonger movie? An origin story? Like, we get to see this guy go off on his own. And so, just like any other character in the Marvel Universe... But Killmonger is all that and 10 bags of chips. He is sick with it. Going against Excursion himself, who is a bad old somebody from the Assassin universe. You know what I'm saying? These two guys. And what makes this a unique matchup? This is straight up military against military. You know what I'm saying? What did you learn at the Labor Seals versus... And not to mention, ex, um, excuse me, Killmonger, he was, he was a Navy ghost. He was part of the Navy Seal CIA agency. So he's used to um, taking over governments. Same thing as Excursion. Just showing up without you even knowing and putting everybody out. Lights out for everybody. So you got these two individuals who enjoy the thrill of just putting you down. Going against each other. One's half human, half cyborg. And the other one's human, but not completely human. You know what I'm saying? Enhanced in a way because he took the Wakanda juice, as I like to call it. But yo, whoo, what a matchup. Excursion versus Killmonger. I don't know who would win, man. It's really difficult to try, but I'm going to let y'all decide. So, you know what I'm saying? Next one on this matchup list. Artillery, aka General of the Assassins versus Lady Kyra from the Ronin Warriors. Yeah. I'm going to break that down later, but let's start off with Artillery General from the Assassins, man. Let's get this poster. You know what I'm saying? Because I had to find someone who was worthy to fight Artillery. I wasn't just going to let her fight just anybody. You had to be worthy. I had an opponent that was worthy to even step to her. You know what I'm saying? You, you can't. Artillery is all that and 10 bags of chips. She's the General of the Assassins, for God's sake. Nah, man, you ain't just showing up to fight her. You got to be worthy. Here goes Artillery, who don't look like this no more. You wouldn't even recognize her if you saw her. That's Artillery right there, man. She's the beast of all beasts right there. You know what I'm saying? She is beast mode. She's not to be trifled. She's not to be tried, period. Let's go. Let's break her down, y'all. Real name, Inyong Gray, alias Artillery, um, 5'9", 142. Um, occupation, she's a bodyguard. So she's Sun Tzu's bodyguard she's not only his fiance but she's his bodyguard what's better than to have your lady be your bodyguard ain't nobody gonna mess with you when your lady's your bodyguard but they don't know that but he knows that you know what i'm saying to she you look at her she looks like a nice lady but you don't realize you messing with the wrong one she's what you call the wrong one you know what i'm saying and she'll let you know too you know what i'm saying and then of course fighting skills include martial arts of every discipline she's a black belt Taekwondo, karate, not to mention, she was she's also trained in the shadow arts. All the assassins are trained in the shadow arts. And then her choice of weapons are plasma grenades, torque cannons, small bombs. You know what I'm saying? She is just an incredible, incredible, incredible character. You know what I'm saying? She's just not to be tried with. She's former CIA agent. You know what I'm saying? She's 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 the general of the assassins. There's, she's a tactician, she plans things ahead. There's not too much you're going to do that's going to surprise her. Because with her, it's all about doing her homework on you to see what your weaknesses and strengths are. You know what I'm saying? Her assumption is that you can do a lot and she's going to make sure she negates everything that you can do. Not to mention, you got to try to negate what she does. I'm going to put it to y'all this way. Whenever Sun Tzu's got to send her somewhere, it's over for everybody over there. You better hope he never sends her. If he got to send artillery, it's over for you. It's over for everybody. She is the one you don't want her sending. You know what I'm saying? That's his lady. And if you got to send her, oh, it's over for everybody. And I'm telling y'all, in the comic book, you won't get to see what she does and how she does. This Card of Assassin's first official comic book is all that and 10 bags of chips, y'all. Now, artillery. I've broken down her down to you. She's going against Lady Kyra of the Ronin Warriors, versus Ronin Warriors universe. If you ever watch Ronin Warriors, I'm going to show y'all the poster. Let me see if I can find it. Because I know a lot of y'all, for those who are unknowledgeable of the Ronin Warriors, which is sad... That's what happens with the cartoons these days. Nobody's watching the best of the best. And you don't realize what you're missing when you ain't watching Ronan Warriors. This is Ronan Warriors right here, y'all. That's Ronan Warriors right there. And what I'm going to have to do, what I'm going to have to do is add Lady Kyra to this, to this mix. I'm going to have to draw Lady Kyra because before she joins forces with the Ancient One, she was one evil, evil, evil. 
I'm talking about she worked for Lord Topper. She's done with the Dynasty Warriors, Deus Kel segment. You know what I'm saying? And then Anubis himself would be who is he was even before he became the ancient one. Lady Kyra's got all the skills. Combat skills, intelligence, beauty, just like artillery. Um her skills are second to none. She's a master master swordswoman. Man, she got hands. She can put them hands on you just like artillery. And we got these two incredible women going at each other. I told y'all, Clash of the Titans can't happen if you ain't got powerful women doing powerful things. You know what I mean? They move the needle. Just like the fellas. You know what I'm saying? Lady Kyra versus Artillery. What a matchup. Oh my God. Woo! Y'all, she would. It's a wreck shop situation. Of course, you know I'd lean towards Artillery, but yo, Artillery will have to put in work to win this fight. Because you've got one woman using tall cannons. Who can also use different array of weapons versus a woman whose primary weapons are katanas with defense with defensive skills that she has. And of course, artillery has not only defensive skills but offensive skills. So this will be one hell of a match. I mean, like I said, an animated series of all these characters I'm mentioning going against each other would be incredible, y'all. So artillery versus Lady Kyra, what a showdown this would be. You know what I'm saying? So I'm gonna let y'all decide who wins. Last but not least, Lord Sun Tzu versus Thanos. That's right. To conclude this, if, uh, Clash of the Titans Part 2, uh, Assassins versus uh, Infinity Villains. Y'all, let's break down Lord Sun Tzu and then I'm going to show y'all Thanos. Leader of the Assassins, as you can see. That's Lord Sun Tzu right there. But before we get up out of here, I got to show y'all the Assassins, right? You see the Assassins right there, all of them together, ready to do damage. Of course, Lord Sun Tzu. There he goes right there with his mystical Egyptian tiger, Seth. You know what I'm saying? Who's evil? Who's the twin? Of Sphinx. Now let's break down uh, Sun Tzu, Lord of the Assassins, right? Real name, Blaine Bishop, alias, of course, Sun Tzu. 6'1", uh, without armor, 6'7", in armor, 195 pounds without armor, 275 pounds in armor. He's the His occupation is engineer and CEO of Argon Tech. So he creates his own technical company, so he doesn't have to answer to nobody. He does what he wants with the confines of that structure. And even without the confines of that structure, he's going to do what he wants. And of course, martial arts skills include, fighting skills include martial arts of every discipline, master in karate and taekwondo, not to mention the shadow arts, because every single member of the assassins is trained in the shadow arts in a different way, but they're all got shadow arts training. You know what I'm saying? Of course, his weapons are the sage, the, the lance sword, double-headed lance sword, quantum beam, shoulder cannon, sonic disc, invisible shield. Of course, he's fiance to artillery. You know what I'm saying? Lord Sun Tzu, cunning, brilliant conniving evil just straight ruthless and what i love about sun Tzu when i created him was he's not one of those overloads that doesn't get his hands dirty he gets his hands dirty he goes in there and does the own fighting himself he doesn't let his minions or his, his sub his underlings do the work for him no no he gets up in there himself you know what i'm saying he just goes in there and mops the floor with you very few got the nerve to get up in the same spot as sun Tzu. his armor is literally invincible you're talking about a guy who's brilliant so you know he's He's more than able to create a suit that offers inv invincibility, enhanced strength, flight. Um, and then, of course, he's got his Egyptian mystical tiger, Seth, the evil tiger, the twin of, uh, uh, of, uh, of, uh, uh, of Sphinx, who has attributes himself. He can grow big, grow large, organic skill, blend into the shadows. That's all the things Seth can do. I mean, Sun Tzu is just one hell of a... He, honestly, he's, I think he's the greatest villain ever created. That's, I'm not Brett Boone doing my own home, but when this thing becomes an animation series, because I've shown this character to most many people at Comic Expos or just on t-shirts, people are like, he's a sick looking villain. Like, he looked like he would do some damage. You know what I'm saying? You can see it. Of course, you can see my bomber jacket. This is the classic bomber jacket right here, available on SimonVision.com. You know what I'm saying? The Platinum Edition. You know what I'm saying? And of course, you got the t-shirt with the all-stars and every single character from the Card of Assassin's Universe on this t-shirt. You know what I mean? But Sun Tzu, one hell of a character. Going against Thanos. You know what I'm saying? Let me show y'all Thanos. You know what I'm saying? Th Thanos from the Marvel Universe. Of course, the Infinity War movies, the Avengers movies. God, I love Thanos. I, I, I was so happy when, when this movie came out great. I was so grateful. Let me see. No, no, it's not in that one, y'all. Hold on, y'all. I'm looking. When, when you get so excited, man, I can't even find what I'm looking for, y'all. Let me look for Avengers, Infinity. I'm looking for it, y'all. Y'all give me some time. Thanos is one sick character. And I love Thanos because he's an overlord just like Sun Tzu that gets his hands dirty. Here we go. Infinity Endgame, y'all. That's what we're looking at right there. Y'all see it? That's Thanos right there with the freaking, uh, with the, uh, Infinity Gauntlet in his hand. He ready to go to work on everybody. 
You know what I mean? You know what I mean? So that's Thanos. Let's Thanos break down. Let's break down Thanos. Combative skills. Overlord. You know what I'm saying? He's got generals under him. But just like Sun Tzu, he gets his hands dirty. He likes to get his hands up in there. He likes to do the work himself. I mean, I remember watching cartoons as a kid. I couldn't stand when villains, the, especially the overlords, wouldn't get up in there and get dirty themselves. You know, by getting up in there yourself, you're inspiring your, your minions, man. They're like, oh, our leaders, he gets grimy. He gets grimy too. You know what I'm saying? But Thanos, man... The Avengers movies, I was so blown away by his combative skills. Like he was whooping all the Avengers with one hand, and he, and the Infinity Gauntlet only had two two jewels on there. I'm like, wait, y'all don't want to see this dude when he's got all five on there? I'm um, excuse me, all six. He would mop the floor with y'all. You know what I'm saying? So Thanos, leader. I mean, probably one of the greatest characters in the Marvel universe. You know what I'm saying? Going against Sun Tzu, these two incredible combatants. Man, I do not know who'd win. Of course, you know I'm pulling for Sun Tzu, but. Yo, this fight would be all that and 50 bags of chips. I mean, these dudes are incredible cat, incredible villains. Can you imagine Sun Tzu and Thanos coming together in an animated series or in a, in a movie? Oh my god, it'd be incredible. And they're going against each other and then and then and they maybe decided maybe they want to form an alliance, which would be one uncomfortable alliance. You know what I mean? Because you know both dudes are gonna be like, as soon as we defeat we gotta defeat, I'm coming to get you. You know what I'm saying? So Sun Tzu versus Thanos. Two incredible overlords. I mean, in, 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 as I always say about my Sun Tzu, in any command, Sun Tzu is in command. Even going against Thanos, Thanos would have to know. I may be going up against a human, but this guy ain't no normal human. As I stated before, the assassins, their technology, what they can do in a way makes them superhuman. You know what I'm saying? Their, their suits, their costumes, their armor offers them superhuman attributes. You know what I'm saying? So they can do different things. And not only that, Sun Tzu has, has flight capabilities, of course. You know what I'm saying? He's got a hoverboard just like Cajun. He can glide around, man. So Sun Tzu ain't staying just on the ground. He's a knight. You know, he, he, I always wanted him to look like a knight, but a dark knight. Like, I'm just talking about straight evil. You see him, you get to running. And when y'all see him on the next, on the comic book, or the version 6 of him, you're going to be like, whoa. This dude really looks like Sun Tzu now. Because as I've grown, these characters have grown. So, y'all, Sun Tzu versus Thanos, I don't know who'd win, but it would be one incredible matchup. So, you know, let's recap this Infinity, uh, this Clash of the Titans Part 2 um, saga, uh, Assassins, versus, Assassins versus Infinity Heroes. You got the Assassins, you got Sun Tzu, Artillery, Excursion, Kanji, Revo, Snipes, going against the Infinity Villains. We got Thanos, Lady Kaga, Killmonger, Killer Frost, Saber, uh, Lady Deathstrike, and Doomsday. You know what I'm saying? So, I'm going to let y'all decide who will win. But, yo, we got the conclusion of this Clash of the Titans saga. Part 3 is coming. You know that Part 3 got to come. But y'all don't know what it's going to be about. But y'all take a listen, all right? So, that concludes our show today. Before we get up out of here, we always like to show y'all all the awesome stuff we got. Phone cases, y'all. In any character, we got them in matte design. And shiny glossy finish. I got the glossy version right here. Available in any character. Of course, this is Card Driver Assassin's uh, version 1. But we got version 5. We got Blade. We got Iron Man. We got Wonder Woman. We got Sonic the Hedgehog. Mega Man. You, so anything you see on this banner behind me, I got a phone case for it. So y'all check out our phone cases on signvision.com. Not to mention, we got these, uh, we got the wallets. You know, you got to keep your stuff somewhere, man. You know what I mean? So we got wallets, y'all. Premium leather. Card Drive Assassin's Classic on one side right there. Version 5 on this side right here. You know what I'm saying? And we got them different characters, man. So you visit our website. You know what I'm saying? We always got to show you all the cool stuff. Now, let's show you all the footwear line. Of course, you got the Bata Sport ones. Y'all got to go get yours, man. Great for running. Great for exercising. I'm getting compliments like crazy whenever I go anywhere out in public, man. People are like, whoa, what is that? Those are the coolest looking shoes I said. I said, yeah, these are the Bata Sport ones. The greatest thing out there right now. So get your pair today on SunVision.com. And what's cool about my shoes... Man, the art is not the same on either side. It's a walking mural, y'all. You know what I'm saying? I love art. And I said, why not integrate it into my footwear? Check that out, y'all. So you got version 5 on this shoe. And you got version 1 on this shoe. You know what I'm saying? And of course, can't forget the sport, no, the Batas 2s. You know what I'm saying? The high tops, the classics right here. Check that out, y'all. I love wearing these jokers. Get compliments all day, every day, man. Get your pair today on subvision.com. This is what we're doing at Sonic's Vision, man. Then, of course, you got the low tops. You got to have the low tops because not everybody wants to wear the high tops. You know what I'm saying? So check that out, y'all. Look at that. You know what I mean? This is what we're doing over here at Sonic's Vision, man. You know? Check that out. Low tops, man. The art, as you can see, it's a walking mural. You know what I mean? And, of course, 
how it all began. We got the blade. We got the blade battles one. This ain't how it all began, but this is the blade battles one right here. This is how it all started. You know what I'm saying? Part of the starting program. Battles one, the blade battles one. You know what I mean? As you can see, it's a walking mural, and these are comfortable. They easily carry your luggage too. That's the cool thing about these shoes. You know what I mean? That's the Batas One Blades right there. Then of course, what started it all? The Batas One. Card for Assassin Batas One. This is how the footwear line started, yo. This is how I came up with that dream, like, hey, Batas Two Sport Ones. You know what I'm saying? This is the classic OGs right here, man. You know what I mean? And it's a walking mural, just like the old, uh, the, the the ones you've seen. You know what I'm saying? Check out the other side. Walking mural, y'all. You know what I mean? This is what we're doing at Sunday's Vision. Just coming up with cool stuff. And can't forget, y'all, it is winter right now. You know, you can see the beanie on my head, reversible, the sicko beanie. Visit the website, sunvision.com, get your pair. And look and check out the hoodies, y'all. I'm saying we got the hoodies. Walking mural. As you can see the hoodie, look at the top of the hoodie. You will never see a hoodie like this anywhere. You can see the art on the outside, now check it on the inside. You flip it, look at that, y'all. We balling over here, Sunvision, Vision, man. You got to go get your hoodie on sunvision.com. You know what I mean? And then, of course, you see me wearing the bomber jacket. Let me back up so y'all can see it. The Platinum Bomber Jacket. You know what I'm saying? Marble Velvet. As you can see, it changes the reflection on different spots, different art locations, different light. Different lighting makes it look differently. Yo, y'all, check out the back. Man. Platinum Bomber Jacket, but we got the basic Bomber Jacket too. Jersey and satin. Then, of course, you got the gold label. Rain uh, Waterproof. So, SunVision.com, y'all, if you want to get your Bomber Jacket. Because the winter's coming, you want to stay warm. And before we get up out of here, y'all... Card for Assassin's bio book. You got to get your copy because when you get this copy, it's going to let you know what's coming with the first official Card for Assassin's comic book. That book is fire. Spit fire, y'all. So, y'all, you don't want to miss out. So, get your copy today so you can read up on all the characters in the Card for Assassin's universe. You can know what's going on when the first official comic book drops, y'all. So, y'all, that concludes our show today. But before we get up out of here, we want to pay these bills, y'all. This Sun Fisher podcast is brought to you by A4 Capital Consulting. Growing good business anywhere and everywhere. Let A4 Capital Consulting take your business to the next level. That's A4 Capital Consulting.com for details, y'all. That's A4 Capital Consulting.com for details, y'all. As I said before, A4 Capital Consulting is coming out with a podcast. A4 Capital Consulting podcast is going to be awesome. A4 Capital Consulting has been so instrumental in our growth as a podcast and as a company, Science Vision as a whole in general. From the marketing to spending expenditures to having balance sheets, to understanding income statements, things like that are the important in growing your business. You know what I'm saying? So, A4CapitalConsultingYall.com, they are getting ready to have a podcast, so get ready to take a listen to some great stuff. And also, too, this time future podcast is brought to you by Anna Del Fodanaco. Don't live a foot pain like Anna Del Fodanaco. Make your feet happy again. That's AnnaDaleCenter.com for details, y'all. That's AnnaDaleCenter.com for details, y'all. As I stated before, this is an awesome show, so let's get up out of here, y'all. Y'all, I want to thank y'all for listening. This podcast is produced and written and directed by yours truly, Adewale Booker Jr. Please check out our website at sunvision.com. We've got all kinds of cool stuff. Like what I just showed y'all, from posters to travel suitcases to uh you you name it, we've got it. You know what? Speaking of travel suitcases, y'all give me a second. I'm gonna I'm gonna break that out so y'all can see it. Y'all thought I was kidding, huh? Y'all thought I was kidding? Check this out. Travel suitcase. This is what we're doing at Science Vision. We always come up with something cool. Look at this. This is the sickest suitcase you've ever seen. I get so much props and respect when I'm traveling. They're like, what is that thing in your hand? It's a travel suitcase. That's what we're doing, y'all. So, you know, check out the website. You've got to. We got so many cool stuff. Phone cases, beanies, bomber jackets, t-shirts, women's and men's, long sleeves, Sweaters, all kinds of cool stuff, y'all. So check out sunsvision.com. And y'all, please subscribe to our podcast wherever you listen, whether it's Apple, Deza, Spotify, Stitcher, Amazon Music. And also, you can listen to our podcast on sunvision.com. And please check out our social media platforms at Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, face to face, Facebook, excuse me, and YouTube, all at sunsvision. I keep saying it, I'm gonna keep saying it. If you ain't got a social media platform as an artist, you are dropping the ball and you are behind the eight ball. You've got to get your TikTok and your YouTube on. Those are the two biggest dogs right now. Don't lie to yourself. Go with the flow. Don't go against the flow. You know what I'm saying? So you got to get the social media platforms. We are kicking butt on TikTok and YouTube. We are just straight wrecking shop. You know what I'm saying? Viewership is ridiculous. We got six million plus views on TikTok. It's insane. That's, I can't believe how far I've come. 
And then this podcast itself is now global. We're in France, Germany, uh, Switzerland, uh, um, Iran, parts of Africa, shoot, Senegal, Nigeria. We, 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 I, I, did, I did not know how far this podcast has gone, but it's, people are listening everywhere. So y'all get on that social media and please listen to us. And please don't forget to review us, rate us, give us a five star, don't be a hater. And as always, y'all, continue to aspire and achieve. Never, ever, 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 ever give up on your dreams. Have a great week, y'all. Stay safe. Peace. Thank you.